Hi, I'm Joe Theismann, world champion quarterback and entrepreneur, and I'm here with our ER doctor, Sudeep. Now, let me ask you this. First of all, how did you become an ER doctor? I mean, do you specialize just in ER now? Or I did. Other things? After medical school, I did a three-year specialization in emergency medicine. So I tried for the NFL, but I didn't <laughs> quite make it. The, you could make it as a yeah. slot receiver today. You're about the right The side. number seven jersey was already taken. So, <laughs> so I switched careers, became an ER doctor, and I'm also a veteran of the Iraq war. And I'm also a motivational speaker. But why, let's take, let's take elements of it. Why, um, why did you become an ER doctor as opposed to other type of specialized doctors? I like the variety of it. I was passionate about everything. I was passionate about a patient who comes in with a stroke, with a little child who comes in with a fever, and you know, a patient who comes in with a broken leg. Everything that can come in, you can take care of an emergency, as an emergency physician. And that's what I loved about it. Is, is it, how difficult is it? Because you see shows, and it, from a stress standpoint, it looks like it has to be just one constant situation after another. It is. Um, you have to prioritize, and there's many lessons that can be taken from the you know, trenches of the emergency room and taken out to the public, like to companies, to corporations. Um, how do you take a situation where someone in bed one is having a heart attack and they need critical actions to survive, mm -hmm. and then bed two might be a lady who is having a baby, and you have 30 other beds, and you have to make certain decisions that can um, mean the difference between life and death. I mean, that's what you're dealing with, the, the significance of where you are in an ER, because my dad was in a car accident, and, and I saw the activity, and I saw all the madness, I guess is the best way to describe it, just the madness that goes on. To find some sense of organization in it, um, you have to be very controlled as an individual, and yet, as basically a leader, as a doctor in the ER, there has to be a way where you can delegate and make sure the priorities are taken care of, right? Correct, correct. And um, whether it is in the emergency room or even, you know, practicing emergency care in the front lines of Iraq and the battlefield, there's decisions that have to be made. And there are many times you just have to think outside the box and you have to improvise with the supplies you have and make the best leadership decisions that you can. You were an ER doctor before you went to Iraq? Correct. And, and you were part of the medical uh, corps over there? Correct, well, sir. Okay. Yes, yes. What, you, just for everybody's edification, which I'm sure is an interesting story, the difference between an ER hospital, say, in any city in this country, as opposed to operating in a foreign country as a part of the military um, corps to take care of soldiers uh, in action, where's the difference? There are many differences, but I think the overall concepts are the same. You have a limited number of supplies and you have a workload, which is in one situation maybe, like I said, that patient with the heart attack, you know, that patient delivering a baby, or on the battlefield it may be an explosion that went off and there's hundreds of people lying on the ground. So all of a sudden, you know, what do you do when someone needs a neck brace and you don't have a neck brace in the battlefield situation? You know, what someone looks at as a combat boot, I can take that boot and you tie it, the soles to their ears and tie it around their head and all of a sudden you have a neck brace. Wow. And as someone who, you know, suffered a comminuted compound fracture of their leg. I'm familiar with that. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you are. Unfortunately, <laughs> I can speak to that particular yeah. from one side of it, not the other. But did you know you can use an M16 rifle and that can function as a splint? You tie it. You know, I'm sure you got a better splint. I, you know, I uh, just I, now that you mention, I guess there just weren't any laying around right. on the field. Although I'll tell you, some of the guys I faced were probably guys I probably would have wanted to, you know, protect myself with from one. <laughs> that that's amazing. It's just that type of fast thinking is so essential. Now you've uh, you've gone out. Now you start doing a lot of speaking. And what do you talk to different groups about with regards to being an ER doctor? What do you, what kind of information can you share with people? about their lives, about their businesses, about what they do? Well, what I've done is I've taken the thousands and thousands of videos, pictures that I, t that I took out there in Iraq and experiences from the emergency room, and I've tied it into a lecture series that 
I've given to lecture audiences numbering in the thousands. I've shared the stage with the President of the United States. And these are just valuable lessons that can be applied to everyone's lives. And for example, give me some of them. There are many of them. I mean, in particular, for example, corporations and companies love these leadership lessons, the teamwork lessons, um, situational awareness, thinking outside the box. They love some of these lessons because they too should think outside the box. When they're getting someone to come teach their employees, you can get another person from corporation or corporate America, or you can get someone with a totally different lens, a totally different viewpoint um, from the front lines of battle, from the emergency room, because you can take leadership lessons from that and apply it to the audience. And that can help hire employees, it can help keep your employees happy, and it can help companies just go to the next level. You look at companies that were doing so great and they just collapsed because of their inability to adapt, and other companies that are smaller that just became huge. So it, these lessons are just universal, and I think that's my passion here. And the biggest thing that I'm most passionate about is any funds that are made doing these lectures, they benefit veterans. So I put bread on my table oh, as an emergency physician, right. but anything I make speaking goes to my organization, and that helps veterans. Well, let's take a second now. What is the organization that the money goes to? So you can learn about thebattlecontinues.org, www.thebattlecontinues.org, to learn more about my mission and, more importantly, to help veterans and help what hundreds and thousands of our veterans have sacrificed for our freedoms out there today. And to keep healthy as well. It's also healthcare educated, so you can get healthcare tips and stay educated. What, uh, from treating different people, the most difficult situation you had to face was what? As you look back through your career, what was the most difficult situation that you had to face? There were different, it's almost like comparing apples to oranges. Like one challenge, for example, was you have to just do your mission no matter what you're internally thinking. For example, I found myself face to face with a brutal dictator. You know, I had to treat Saddam Hussein as a patient after his capture. And, you know, here he is, number one enemy, or maybe next to him is a gentleman that you had breakfast with that morning, one of your fellow soldiers that you took care of, and then a few minutes later, you know, you're pronouncing him dead from a gunshot wound, and a few minutes later is the guy who shot him as your patient. So you just have to focus on your mission. You have to get the job done. And, you know, those were challenging moments. Other challenging moments were mass casualty situations. You know, you're a physician, maybe you have one assistant, some medics, and a bomb goes off and there are hundreds of thousands of people on the streets of Fallujah, Baghdad, wherever. Or in the emergency room, you know, how do you run the organization, run, run it so the mission gets accomplished? And again, these are just core lessons that can be taken to corporate America, it can be taken anywhere. You know, you know there's, you, you're so right. The stories that you share, the experiences that you go through, they may be different in nature, but philosophically, they do have a universal meaning when it comes to dealing with certain situations. Right. You're trained as a leader in the, in the ER. How many people would you be in charge of when you operate in an ER? It, it depends where you're working, if you're doing day shift, Average, if you're doing say, night. Let's say, let's say a night, let's night shift because that seems to be the craziest time, I guess you could say. Right. I view it as teamwork. I view it as, you know, a well-oiled machine team consisting of maybe 20, 30, 40 nurses that are on, um, paramedics that are bringing in the patients constantly and you have to communicate by them with them on radio. You have to uh, communicate with administrative staff, so it's a whole well-oiled machine. But the point I'd make is, let's take this to the battlefield, for example. To save a life on the battlefield, you don't just need the medic or the doctor. You need the person who carries the stretcher. You need the person who flies the medevac. You need the person who filled the fuel on the medevac, and none of those jobs are any less important. And this is similar to any company, any corporate corporation, any school, university. It's the same core lessons of how do you communicate, how do you have situational awareness, how do you innovate, how do you adapt, and how do you get the job done. Here's another one. How do people find you? 
tell everybody out there how they find you, how they can come and have you uh, come and speak. Sure, you can go to thebattlecontinues.org and request a lecture there. And that, again, the proceeds from that will benefit veterans. Um, if you so desire, you can donate and that will be used to benefit veterans. And also, I'd like, it's not just about veterans, about helping yourself also. Whether you're in corporate America or a student, you can't do what you do unless you stay healthy. And a lot of what I do is healthcare education. You can educate yourself on healthcare tips. Um, and I'm on uh, media pretty often educating Americans on issues that they face. And it's important to keep ourselves healthy, just like you service a car. You have to service yourself so you don't end up broken down in the emergency room. You're right. You know, you know it's, it's an interesting point because people look at athletes today right. and they use the term heroes. My personal opinion, you're a true hero. Thank oh, you. Thank you. It's thank you nice. so much. Appreciate our it. heroes are our veterans out there and That's especially right. the ones who gave their lives. You're right.